Hi everyone and welcome back to episode number 22 of the Angular 6 Springboard course. Today we are going to learn about Angular testing. Well, Angular, thankfully, uh, has been designed with testing in mind. So if we are talking about an Angular app, we can test logic. Uh, and by logic I mean we can test services, we can test pipes. Uh, Angular allows us to test components and we can even do end-to-end -end integration testing. So uh, the guys at Google have really, really put in a lot of effort to allow Angular apps to be uh, very testable and very easy to, you know, write unit tests for. Now, in terms of testing difficulty, uh, from my experience, you know, testing logic is the easiest thing to do. So, testing pipes and testing services should not be very difficult. Now, uh, components on the other hand uh, deal with views and deal with rendering views to the user. So, components are more difficult to test because of this, you know, feature. Also, components tend to have a lot of dependencies upon other services and pipes and this added uh, dependency count also uh, contributes to the increased uh, difficulty for testing. And last but not least, end-to-end -end testing, you know, because of the number of things that need to take care of, is the most difficult one of all. And in today's video, uh, and even in the next one, we're going to focus on testing pipes and testing services. We're not going to cover components and end-to-end -end testing. In fact, my personal opinion, and again, take this with a grain of salt because it's just a personal opinion based on my own experience, I don't focus too much on testing components. Like I said, components contain, uh, you know, they have a lot of dependencies and they also render views to our user. So instead I focus on moving all the logic in services and pipes. So uh, my components don't have any logic whatsoever. They just, you know, delegate calls to other services. And then if we really have to test components, then we can do that using, you know, uh, a tool like Selenium, for example, you know. And that's why I'm telling you that, you know, what I think is that you should move all the logic inside services and pipes, test them very, very well, and leave components, you know, without writing tests in Angular for them. Instead, test them using other and more appropriate tools. And of course, like I said, all the logic in services and pipes, don't put logic in components, just delegate to other services and pipes. I mean, dependency resolution is very cheap in Angular. You just declare dependencies in the constructor of your component and they get injected automatically. So it's really easy to create components that have dependencies and then just delegate the calls to them. Cool. So now that we discussed about the... Um, uh, theory, the theory, let's write some code and test our um, uh, search filter pipe. I fired up the Nodit application and I don't know if you remember from the previous episodes but we have a filtering mechanism here where you know we can write in some text and then all the nodes are filtered uh, based on the content uh, of this input. So this is done via a pipe and if you're not familiar with this concept, please take a look at episode number 21 to see how we've built it. And today we are going to write unit tests for it. So I'm going to open IntelliJ. Okay. And I don't know if you remember this pipe. So it's a custom pipe called node text filter. It implements pipe transform as every pipe should do. And then this is the method that I want to test. So the transform method, which receives a list of nodes and a text to search them by. And then it filters those nodes based on title and on text. So if our node contains that search text in the title or in the text, then it passes the filter. And also if you pass in null or if the search text is empty, then we don't apply any filtering. Okay, so this is the method that I want to test. and this basically in its essence is a very simple um, TypeScript class and it has no dependencies whatsoever. So this is the easiest case to, to perform unit tests. Now, 
uh, when we generate components, services, pipes, etc., using the Angular CLI or the built-in IntelliJ tooling, we get a test file called a spec. So in this case, we have the node text filter pipe.cs, which is our pipe, and we also have node text filter .pipe .ts. and the spec file is the unit test, the file in which we can write unit tests, and they they are usually written in the same directory and this makes it very easy to switch back and forth between uh, your unit tests and your actual code and you have to respect this naming convention okay so this naming convention uh, basically simplifies searching unit tests and the positioning of these files relative to uh, the things that you want to test so let's go ahead and publish open I'm going to close all the other windows and we can see that we already have a, a test written in here and this test is generated uh, by default by the um, angular cli and this test basically creates an instance of the class that we want to test so if you have written a service this test called create an instance will create an instance of that service and test that that instance was created uh, if you write a component it's the same thing for the pipe is the same thing okay uh, and we are going to leave this test as it is and we are going to add more tests here now once we have tests how do you run them well it turns out that we can use the angular cli for that so you remember we have ng serve to a uh, fire upper angular app well we also have ng test to actually open up a testing window that will perform tests each time we make modifications to our code. So it's like a live coding session. And this is especially uh, cool if you're using TDD as, as a way to write your software because on after each modification that you make to your Angular app, all the tests will be executed and you will get instant feedback uh, in case there are errors or problems. So I usually, when I write you know Angular apps, I, I uh, use ng-test, I leave this window open, I write my components, I write my services, I write my pipes, I write unit tests for them, and then I get instant feedback if the test passes, if the tests are passing or if the tests are failing. Okay, so we have one spec, so one test, this create an instance, and everything is green, and we also have this confirmation here. Executed one of one, success, cool. Now, let's test, for example, this piece of logic. So, uh, let's see if uh, by passing an empty search text uh, the nodes don't get filtered okay so we are going to use this uh, syntax so it okay should not filter nodes if search text is empty now please put in very meaningful names in here because uh, when you open the karma window these names are appearing and if you add in very descriptive names it will be very easy for you to see which tests are failing so don't you know don't put short names names that don't mean anything just put a long text there that makes it really easy to understand what this you know specific test does okay so don't have any dependencies and now we'll write the function for our test now um, I'm my big fan of TDD, so I'm using the arrange act assert pattern, and I'm actually marking it here as well to make my tests easier to read. So in arrange, I actually define uh, the system under test. So I'm constructing it, I'm building the parameters. In act, I'm actually executing the logic that I want to test. So in this case, I will call the transform method, and in assert, I'm asserting. I'm I'm verifying that my expectations have been met and by splitting each test in these three uh, blocks of code it makes it really easy for everyone to understand what's going on in the test so it's like a TDD you know practice cool so um, let me build my pipe so remember we are constructing the system under test and in our case this is the node text filter pipe which is just a standard you know, type your class. And then I want to define the search text. And remember, I want to test against an empty search text. And I'll even add this to the variable name just to provide more meaning. 
and I will also define a list of nodes as input. So we have a node array. Okay, and let's add something in here. What is the import statement? Note array. Okay, so let's see. We have an ID. Uh, okay, we have an ID of one. I think we have a title. Let's say title one. I think we have text, you know, text one. And I think we have notebook ID, which I don't know, can be 10. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this line and add in another note. I'll change the ID, the title. I made a mistake here. So note one, text one, text two, and they are in the same notebook. Cool. So I have my list of notes over here. Text notebook ID. I don't think I'm missing anything. No, it should be okay. It's just an uh, IntelliJ thing. ID string title string. Uh, I think I uh, might have made a mistake here. Ah, okay. I'm missing a property. Last modified on, which is the date. Okay, I'm gonna pass in an empty string because uh, we don't care what's in there. Okay. Okay, so now I have arranged my system. So I have all the input data that, that I need to perform this test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to act upon my system. So I'll say let filtered nodes equal, so pipe dot transform. I'll pass in the input nodes and the empty text search. And now we're going to verify the result of that operation. So we can use expect uh, filtered nodes, sorry, filtered nodes dot length uh, to be one because nothing should have been filtered. Okay, and uh, filter notes that length. Okay, we have a small problem over here. Let's see uh, what's it about. Uh, should not filter expected. Oh, yeah, my bad. So we have two notes in here. We have an empty search text, and obviously, if you apply a filter, we should get two instead of one. So nothing should be filtered. Okay, and this is what this output is telling us that the test has failed. We expected two nodes, but we only got uh, one. So, you know, we are actually expecting that no node gets filtered, so that in the end the output is again uh, two nodes. And now we have modified our test, and our test is passing, and we know that our logic is good. Well, actually, it was a good exercise to see what happens when you know tests are failing. Cool. So now let's write another test, and actually search our notes so we have to provide instead of an empty search text let's provide an actual text you know and see if filtering works so we are going to write a new test i'm just going to make this window big here so again we're going to give it a meaningful name so should filter notes based on search text okay okay again I'm using a range act assert and okay I'm going to copy the setup and to save some time and I'll modify the search text to be text 2 so I'm searching all my notes with text 2 and obviously the result should be only this note because the other one does not contain text two in uh, the title or in the text. Okay, again we are, so let filtered notes equal pipe transform, pass in the notes, and this is not an empty search text anymore, so it's an, a valid search text. Okay, and now we can make our assertions, so I'm expecting that we have one note after the filtering process. So filter notes dot length 
to be one and I'm also expecting that I have the correct note so filter nodes no ID to be I'm expecting it to be two so I'm expecting that the result of the filter is this note over here so I've written my test um, the test suite is executed automatically and we have three tests three tests succeeded we can see them here and well it appears that our pipe is functioning you know as expected and this is how you test simple components like pipes uh, simple you know uh, pipes and simple services now in the next episode we are going to uh, look at some advanced scenarios involving the HTTP client because if you're writing web apps there are situations actually there are a lot of situations when we where we make requests to HTTP endpoints and a lot of our services uh, depend on making HTTP requests and we'll see how we can mock the HTTP client and perform this those kind of tests in the next episode so stay tuned before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the romanian coder youtube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because i would love to get feedback from you guys you can also find me on twitter at romanian coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye